Hi, David Harper, I'm Bonnock Turtle, with a brief look at credit risk mitigation in Basel II. First, to put it in perspective, recall that Basel II has three pillars, and it's the first pillar that contains the quantitative rules that determine the minimum capital requirements. And that first pillar has rules for each of credit risk, market, and operational risk. In the last couple of days, I've reviewed the rules for credit risk under the first pillar, and we saw that there is a basic or standardized approach that evolves into a set of advanced approaches that are called internal ratings-based. In regard to the standardized approach, we saw that the treatment here is to take the exposure, that would be a credit loan asset, for example, and multiply it by a risk weight, where the risk weight is a function of the type of counterparty, for example, a bank, a corporation, a sovereign entity, and the credit rating. When we looked at that, we were generally referring to unsecured loans or unsecured exposures, that is to say they are not supported by collateral or some other financial guarantee. So now let's consider when the exposure is supported by a credit risk mitigant, and that's within the standardized approach. So that's why I serve up the perspective, because we can get confused about what we're talking about. And now we're talking about the standardized approach within credit risk when there is mitigation. And so in my overall map, here I've got the treatments for credit risk mitigation, and we see that Within the standardized approach, there are two variations, a so-called simple and a comprehensive. Now, and I'm going to show you the spreadsheet next, but first, let me just remind, the standardized approach is about multiplying a exposure by a risk weight. And the key difference between the simple and the comprehensive is the simple operates on the risk weight and the comprehensive operates on the exposure. The simple substitutes a risk weight the comprehensive adjusts the exposure. So hopefully that's a helpful way just to serve it up and now we'll look at the spreadsheet. Okay, here's the spreadsheet that's uploaded to the member page from FRM Candidate Customers. And first we just make an assumption about the basic exposure that it's a $40 million loan to a non-financial corporation and there is no rating. So this is an unrated corporate exposure. And if we use the lookup table under the standardized approach, we will see that for a non-financial corporate exposure where there is no rating, the risk weight is 100%. By the way, that's one of the dubious or perverse outcomes of the table. The risk weight for a rating that was below B- minus would actually be higher at 150%. So an unrated actually does better. But nevertheless, that's the risk weight that gets multiplied by the exposure. So we know from the basic Basel approach, the capital charge is going to be 40 million multiplied by the risk weight of 100% multiplied by 8%, or 3.2 million against the unsecured loan. Now we have two scenarios. First, a simple, we'll use the simple approach, and where we'll, we'll make this assumption, and I just made this up, that this loan is now 70% collateralized by a triple A rated bank loan. So notice, we have an un, unrated corporate exposure, but now we have it 70% collateralized by a high-quality bank loan, so we ought to get some benefit from that. Under the simple approach, recall that I said we operate really on the risk-weight aspect of this formula. So all we do is we risk-weight the collateral portion and the uncollateral portion and put them back together. So in this case... If we're 70% collateralized on 40 million, that means 28 million of it is collateralized. And then we go back to that same lookup table the, under the standardized approach, and we would find that a triple A rated bank loan has a risk weight of 20%. So the portion that is collateralized, the 28 million out of the 40, receives a 20% risk weight. That's really how simple that is. That means the we still have another 12 million that's not collateralized, the difference between 40 and 28 million. That remains uncollateralized, so it continues to deserve the 100% risk weight. So you can see all we do here in the simple approach is we take the collateralized portion, give it its weight for its higher credit quality, and what is not collateralized remains with the weight 
that it would otherwise have. And so the risk weighted assets then, if we see here, just becomes a blend of the two. We take the 28 million, multiply by 20%, and we add the 12 million, multiply by 100%. Such that now our risk weighted assets, our risk weighted exposure is 17.6 million. And that means our capital charge is 17.6 million times 8% or 1.4 million. And notice it's less than half what it would be on an unsecured loan. So we definitely picked up in the capital charge a lot of the benefit due to the fact that this loan is 70% collateralized by high quality collateral. Okay, we're almost done. Now we're just going to move to the comprehensive approach still within the standardized. And now just remember, Pre, with the simple approach, we operated on the risk weight. With the comprehensive approach, now we're going to operate on the exposure. We're going to adjust the exposure specifically. So I'm going to move this down here. And now I'm just going to make a different assumption. In the, in the actual model, you can uh, ch change the assumptions, of course. So here, I'm going to assume that, that we are 100% collateralized by an unrated bank loan. Now what we do is here at the bottom, I've got the formula that uses the haircuts and all we do here is we adjust the exposure such that we take the exposure here right here and we subtract the collateral right here so if you think about this before the haircut terms we're just taking the exposure and we're netting out the collateral in other words what part of the exposure is not collateralized the only difference here is we're volatility adjusting that is to say, we're going to plus up the exposure by the haircut. We're going to increase the exposure by this haircut, and we're going to decrease or volatility adjust the collateral down similarly with a haircut. The reason we do that is owing to the fact that these positions are current or today, over time, we know they that these can move against us, and the way that they would move against us specifically is the exposure could increase in value and the collateral can decrease in value. So notice they're going in opposite directions. So here, if we take the $40 million exposure again, then we're going to use a table provided by Basel that gives different haircuts depending on the type of collateral. So for example, cash has no haircut because cash is safe. But for, let's say, an unrated uh, bank loan with a term of one to five years, the haircut's going to be 6%. So this this haircut value will vary, but all it does, this 6% is increases the loan. So you can see we increased the exposure from 40 to 42 point million by its haircut 6%. That's the upward adjustment here, the volatility adjustment right here. Here's our collateral of 40 million. Let's assume that this collateral is also an unrated, well, is also uh, an unrated bank loan one to five years. So the haircut there is 6% again. But this time as collateral, we're going to haircut it in the negative direction. So you can see the 6% is subtracted. And so I'm not going to do this currency mismatch adjustment. That would be if the collateral and the underlying exposure are in different currencies. And so I'm going to leave that out. And we're, we're going to end up simply with netting the haircut or volatility adjusted exposure with the volatility or haircutted collateral and so you can see it's the difference between 42.4 and 37.6 so our net ex net exposure on a haircut adjusted or volatility adjusted basis is 4. Point million then we have the risk weight of 100 percent and then we multiply the net exposure by the risk weight by the capital charge of eight percent and in this case we get less than a million or 380,000 so we really got a benefit under this comprehensive approach. But you can see again, whereas that simple approach substituted the risk weight of the collateral, this comprehensive approach deducts the collateral after adjusting both the exposure and the collateral for the haircut. So I hope this was helpful. This is David Harper, the Bonnock Turtle. Thanks for your time.